Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, it's, uh, life is always exciting. It's never a dull moment for me. I don't know about you, but uh, my life is always doing things and things are always happening. And so, you know, we're just blessed. Uh, the gentleman on the front row, he's uh, Richard there. He's our brother-in-law. He's Diana's uh, husband there. He's down just fellowshipping with us. So we're blessed to have him from Washington. So praise God for that. And uh, thank God for that. So we're just blessed. And, uh, you know, if you, as I was just preparing today and preparing for things, how many you know sometimes you just don't know what to say or do with what you hear? Or what you see, amen, with what the world is declaring or seeing. And, uh, you know, sometimes you just kind of go, okay, Lord, what is it that, you know, I know you know everything. You want to, you know, what is it that you really want us to know? Amen. So while I'm talking, go to Ephesians chapter 2, if you would. Uh, I've got two sermons that, I'm, that are here with me, and I'm, I'm circling the airport, see which one we land on. And uh, we'll probably do a combination of both of them. And don't worry, don't worry, we get you out right on time. Uh, I, I plan on being here next week too. So it, it's good stuff and good things, you know. Uh, how many of you know that, that we see things in the world and, and people, uh, they know this, you know. I mean, they, they do this very, very good. They know that if they c- cleverly present a lie often enough or repeatedly enough, pretty soon you'll begin to think it's true. You know, John Osteen used to say this. He said, you know, a lie will go around the world seven times before truth can even get its boots on. And uh, it is true because our world is more prone to believe lies than they are anything else. But, you know, and experts know that. They know that if you'll, you know, cleverly present a repeated, you know, lie often enough that it becomes accepted as the truth. And uh, what happens there is that the enemy is endeavoring to deceive as many as he can. You know, the Bible says in the last days, many will be deceived. They'll walk in deception. The problem with deception is, is that people actually believe that what they're doing and what they're saying is true. Because it's based on their thoughts. It's based on what they've heard. And so according to wherever you're getting your news source or wherever you're getting your source from is how you base your life on. Whatever has your ear is is, is who you are walking by and walking with. And and, and it can cause all kinds of major problems, you know. And that's why you see say they just believe they're correct. They believe they're accurate. They believe they're on the right side. And we all know that that's not reality. Amen? Amen. We see that. We see that in, in, in a, you know, in, or of course, I mean, we see that. In, the greatest thing is in, you know, the realm of our government. We see that more than anything else. And, you know, I just pray and say, God, we need to see them open their eyes. And I think that's one of the things that we're going to have to do is we need to pray not for them, but we need to pray for the church's eyes to be open because people have decided they're going to do things based on other things other than the word of God. And so we knew that in the last days, the Bible declares that the Bible says that, you know, and uh, in Ephesians chapter two, uh, in verse two, you know. Actually, let's begin in verse 1 just because it's really good. We're going to read verses 1 through 10 here. And we're going to stay right in here for just a little bit. And then we're going to rescue you. (laughs) Amen. Uh, My title today is What's Wrong with Wrong? Amen. (laughs) Say, what in the heck is that? Well, let me just share what's wrong with wrong because wrong can actually lead you into deception and cause you to be defeated and actually can lead you off, off the cliff. You know, what's wrong with wrong? Well, if, if there's not a standard, if there's not truth, then the world will never know that they're wrong. Amen? Amen. And uh, you believe it or not, God's called us as the church uh, to bring sanity to the world. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Isn't it amazing? I don't know about you, but I have been challenged my whole entire life as ministry. Just because people just thought I'm a nice guy, I could, they can yell at me and do things and come up and argue and fuss and fight, you know. And one of the biggest things, they always want to come to you and say, well, how do you know you're right? How do you know this is right? How do you know all these things? And I said, because this is truth. I decided to live my life based on this, and it brought peace, and it brings joy. 
you know? And how do you know that people want to argue, they want to fuss, they want to fight, they want to get mad at you, and when you just smile and say, it's too late for me. Well, you're just not listening to the facts. You're just not listening to what I'm saying. I said, you're right. <laughs> because this is truth. I don't need to know what you know. <laughs> well, you're unteachable. Oh, no, no, I'm very teachable. Show me in the Bible. Give me scripture. Not your interpretation. Give me scriptures. Show me what the truth is. You know, if you want to go here, let's go. If you want to go to do the word of God, let's do that. I love to take hold of the word of God and do scriptures. Love scripture battles. Love that. I love to discuss the word of God. Let's do this. You know, hallelujah. That's one of my favorite things to do. But look what he says here in verse one. Once And I'm going to read out of the New Living because I just like the way it said it. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil. Just so you know, the rest of the people that are not born again, they are obeying the devil, okay? Don't get mad at them. Don't get upset at them. They're doing a good job doing what they're supposed to do. You know, the commanders of the powers in this unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Hallelujah. You know, when you see this, and you understand this, before I go on a little farther, you know, the Bible does also say that, you know, that there are time coming, and of course, in the last days, there are people no longer going to hear good teaching. They're not going to hear what the Word of God is. They don't want to have sound and wholesome things. They want to have itching ears. They want to hear what they only want to hear. And I trust you're not like that, that you're going to hear the truth, and the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. You know, you've heard this saying from me for years and years and years. Any old dead fish can float downstream. All right, anybody can go with the flow. It takes a live one to swim upstream. Amen, to go against the flow and to do that. It takes a live one to go. So let's keep reading and then we're going to share. It says, but God, who is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much. Oh my goodness, I love that. That even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us up. Amen. Or he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Amen. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so, uh, so none of us can boast about it, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he's planned for us long ago. Amen. Thank God for the word of God. Amen. How did I love that? Because look at verse seven. He says, so God can point to us in all future ages as examples of his incredible wealth of his grace and his kindness toward us. Amen. God wants to point to you and I to show the world how we're supposed to act, how we're supposed to be. Amen. Because there's a time coming when people are not going to. Guess what, folks? We're living in that time. How many of you know that? How many know that we're living in that time? Amen. Hallelujah. And here's the thing. People want to hear what they want to hear instead of hearing what God wants to speak into their hearts. Hallelujah. And here's the thing about it is is that we've got to be a standard of truth. And we've got to stand strong in the things of God. Amen. You've got to have a backbone. Are y'all doing okay? Y'all okay? It's, you know, it said, but God, who was rich in mercy, he forgave you. He loved you. Y'all say, you're all on the right side. You know that? You all know the truth. I think that's one of the things we haven't done well enough, I think, in some things, to know the truth, because the truth sets you free. And when you know the truth, when you know that you're truly born again, and Jesus Christ is your Lord and is your Savior, 
Amen. And you know, hallelujah, that you've passed from death unto life. Glory to God. That it doesn't matter what anybody else says. Doesn't matter if they say you're wrong in this area, you're wrong over here. You know, whoo, but I'm saved. Hallelujah, but I'm full of life. I may not know the ins and outs of all the different things. I may not know the Greek or the Hebrew or any kind of thing. Glory to God. But I know Jesus loves me and he saved me. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you remember the scripture in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 says this. It says, what sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil. That dark is light and light is dark and that bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. What he's saying, we live in a society where, hey, this is great. No, it's not. It leads to death. It's sin. How do, oh, no, no, no. So there's nothing wrong with this. But the Bible says it's sin. Yes. And it leads to a pathway of death. Oh, no, 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 no. If it's okay with me, it's got to be okay. Because I'm a God unto myself. Right. You know, that's what lasciviousness is. <laughs> Believing that I, whatever, if it feels good to me, it's got to be good. If it's okay with me, it's got to be okay. I mean, you know, that's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. It's just, it just boggles my mind. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 says this. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. And we look at this, we all know that the reason that, you know, Satan deceived Eve, Eve by causing her to doubt the validity and the strength of God's word. Amen. And yet we always want to fight with our mental abilities instead of fighting with our supernatural strength. Amen. Because what he wanted to do, here's what Satan did. He deceived Eve by causing her to question, well, now, did God really say that? And in the process, what he did is he perverted God's character in her eyes. And what happens is, is that we don't think that God's really for us. How many you know God's for us? God's with us? How many you know that no matter what, anybody comes in? Listen, God fights our battles. You don't want to come against because we're going to let God do it. God will handle it. God will deal with it. And you can't hide from God. Amen? You know, Jude chapter, Jude, there's only one chapter, but Jude verse 3 in the Message Bible says this. He says, dear friends, I've dropped everything to write to you about this life of salvation that we have in common. I have to write insisting, begging that you fight with everything that you have in you for this faith entrusted to us as a gift to guard and to cherish. How many know he said that we've got to fight for the faith? We've got to contend for the faith. How many of you know you're going to have to contend hallelujah, for the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ? And what that means is you've got to fight for what you believe in. And it's not fighting in the natural. It's not fighting here and arguing and fussing. not getting on Facebook and trying to give your opinion. And getting this and, you know, and all that stuff. And Instagram, all that kind of. And just let's get out of here and let's just make it all. Or X or all these other things that you want to do. No, praise God. Hallelujah. We've got to take hold of the word of God. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, he said, and I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified. Why am I doing it? Because there is an urgency. Because we're all thinking, well, that can't be that bad. They can't be this. This isn't, you know, the world, the world is crazy. The world is, when you look and see and you think of things and you go, my gosh, where are they getting their, their information I mean, when you look and see, that doesn't even make any sense. But here's what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. He said, listen, you need to herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. I think that's one of the things we have, and we can get complacent. Listen, Jesus is coming back. There's an urgency. That's one of the things that he just, because he said, listen, if you believe what you believe about me coming back, how come you're not a little bit more excited? How come you're not a little bit more of an urgency to win the lost? A little bit more of urgency to speak truth. Y'all doing okay? All right, look what he said. Herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by and be at hand. Be ready. Whether the opportunity seems to be a favorable or an unfavorable one. Whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Or whether it is welcome or unwelcome. 
<laughs> you as a preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong. Not hateful, not meanful, but you're going the wrong way. And convince them, rebuking and correcting, warning and urging and encouraging them. Be unflagingly and inexhaustibly in patience and teaching. Hallelujah. See, the devil is so afraid of one thing. He's afraid of the word of God. Amen. Because he knows that when you get the word of God in your mouth, you begin to say what the word of God says. That's power. That defeats him. That causes him not to. Because the word of God has power to heal, to deliver, to save, to set the captive free. What did Jesus do in the wilderness when the devil came to tempt him? He didn't say, okay, let's talk about this. He said, it is written. It is written. The only way you can overcome the devil is by it is written. Amen. The only way you overcome the world and all of its crazes and everything is faith. The Bible says that in 1 John chapter 5. Amen. It says we overcome the world by our faith. Amen. It's the only way that you can. The only way that you overcome the devil is through the word of God. And the only way that you overcome your flesh is by your spirit telling your flesh to shut up. Okay, you take hold of the word of God. But here's the problem is, is that we've got a confusion on the inside of us because we don't take this view. We want everybody else's view. Amen. And if you have a different view than the biblical view or the Bible view of life and the Bible view of things, then your views are going to change depending upon what you're going through. Your God's going to be a God that changes depending upon how good he can do whenever I, well, I, I think he'll do this, but I don't know if he can do this. Y your view will change. It'll change multiple times. It's amazing. How many of you ever met somebody who said, you know, I used to believe that way. Or have you ever had somebody going to say, you know, why are you doing? And you, you know, you tell me hey, I'm doing really good. No, no, no. How are you really doing? Come on, come on, tell me all the dirt. What's going on? Is that a faith statement? Are you giving me a faith statement? Well, of course I'm giving you a faith statement. If I'm a faith person, I'm going to tell you in faith. I'm going to believe God and good things. But what they want you to do is they want you to get in touch with all of the negative things, all the bad things that's going on. And every one of us can have a sad story and tell all the, tra all the things that's going on. The key is, is that we don't need to get in touch with, we need to get in touch with what God says. I believe that what God said, that's what I'm doing. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, and we think this is, we think we're getting persecuted now more than any time. We're not getting persecuted now at all compared to what they were getting persecuted in the first century. I mean, they wanted, they're getting killed. They were getting thrown to the lions. There were all kinds of things. And they were like, these Christians are crazy. They're just narrow-minded. They're just narrow. They won't do this. You know, they're like, oh, they won't believe it. They're, they're intolerable. They're nonconformists. You know, I mean, my gosh, they're, you know, they're standing for something. <laughs> Let me just share something. Let me make a statement here. You need to understand this. Really important. That's why when you get attacked for your Christian faith or you get attacked because you're doing the right thing, you need to understand God put you on the earth for that. And I'm going to make a statement. You're getting ready. But if you're going to write, take notes, write this down. Hallelujah. God established the church with this intention that evil would never be left unchecked. Amen. 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 So that when somebody does it, say, well, no, that's not right. <gasps> wow. How dare you come? Why would you say that? Because it's not right. Not according to the word of God. Now, here's the problem. She said, well, I don't have that. I, I don't want to offend anybody. I'm to, listen, you're the highest authority in the church. I mean, in the, in the world. You're the, high, the church is the highest authority. So you have, the high, you have a right because you know what's right. You, if you know what's right to do what's right, you're supposed to do what's right. And you do what's right because it's the right thing to do. And you have to say, you, you can't, you can't. The, the, the church has been silent. And we're not there. We're, coming. we're not judging anybody. That's the problem. We're not judging. We have in compassion. I want to tell you the truth. If you told somebody, listen, I'm going to tell you how to get to so and so. How to get? You got to go out here. You got to get on 99. You got to go down there to this. And all of a sudden, you tell them, and you got to go north. And they turn around, and they're going to get on 99, and they go south. And you call them on the side. Say, hey, you're going the wrong way. Oh, no, no. Why, why are you you're judging me? <laughs> But you asked me, I told you this, was the way. but no, I want to go this way, but it's the wrong way. You say, oh, that's just silly. 
That's the world. The world is like, hey, we're going to do this. You know, here's what we're going to do. I mean, you know what our biggest challenge is? It's to keep lunacy out of the church. Craziness. Oh, you're saying we're okay. No, I'm saying, yeah, your thought processes can be just totally, ben- I'm like, Lord Jesus, how do you think like that? Because we're muddied by the spirit of the age. I mean, and especially in this day in society, it's like, oh, everything is a judgment. Oh, you don't love me because this is who I am. No, I love you so much, I'll tell you the truth so you don't have to be that way. I will love you and tell you that you're, what you're doing in your life is going to mess you. It's going to cause great havoc. And the saddest thing is if you continue in that way, you're going to be lost without God. That's not, and, and I'm not being mean because I guarantee you, you know, when I was 12 years old, I had a vision of all my friends and had a vision of hell and had a vision of things where I'm sitting in the great cloud of witnesses or I'm sitting in the grandstand of heaven and they're all being judged because they didn't make Jesus the Lord of their life. And they're all looking at me and saying, hey, how come you didn't tell me? How come you didn't tell me? And after about the 20th one, you know, it'll get to you. Of how come I didn't tell them? How come I didn't? How come you're up there and I'm going to be tormented? Because every person that we came in contact that we did not and do that, did not share what God's speaking to us. And it's not a judgment thing. It's a thing that, glory to God, we want them to be that. Because we were afraid that they might not like us. I'm sorry God told me you were coming. That's probably why a lot of you didn't come. But that's okay. You're watching. It's all good. I told you I'm going to rescue you in a minute, okay? I'm going to give you the first 30. And, and then we're going to rise you up, raise you up, Okay. But no, we've got to grab a hold of the truth. We've got to see some things here. We've got to see what God is doing and what he's saying. Hallelujah. He's trying to shut us up. Amen? Because there's a deception out there. What's wrong with wrong? It's because what's wrong with wrong, if you keep going, it's going to lead you to destruction and lead you to hell. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And we need to understand that's what we're talking life and death. You know, we're talking, what we're endeavoring to do is that we are endeavoring. Like I said, God established the church so that evil would not be unchecked. God said that we are the highest authority. Hallelujah. He's given us our own power and authority to deal with all of this stuff. We can tear down the enemy's strongholds. Amen. And we've got to pray and stop his evil strategies. I'm asking God for mercy. Mercy and grace over our nation, over our, the world, over all that's going on. We need to see the hand of God. Yes. Amen? Amen? You know, it's, it's, it's a tragedy of what's going on around the world with the wars and rumors of war. You know, we've got Israel bombing Lebanon. We've got ministries in Lebanon that we support that are, that are leading many, many of those folks to Jesus, but they're getting bombed. They're getting, and there's all kinds of things that are happening. And it's not those folks' fault. It's not people's fault. It's the people that are harboring their fault and what's going on. But we've got to pray for protection. So you've got all kinds of different concepts of what's going on. Amen. You know? We got, you know, people that are, that we're praying for and God's doing this revival that's going and things are happening in, in the Ukraine. We got people that we support over there that are in Russia, but there are people, they can't help it that the governments are crazy. Amen. And so he's like, well, are you going to be on this side? No, you don't. You got to be on God's side. God's got people in every country. God's got people in every place. God's the, and we're for the people. We're for those that are loving God. And there needs to be revival. There needs to be the power, the presence of God. Amen? And we've got God's word on it. And God's word is the most powerful thing. And God's made us. And he's established us as the church. So we as the church, we got to rise up. Okay? So I said, well, I just don't know what to do, Pastor. You got a mouth. You got to rise up and begin to pray. You got to do it, you know. I mean, I mean, we know we're living in delusional times. Okay, we've got all that. We know, and, and we know that it's just like the Bible says that it's it's seducing spirits and doctrine of devils that is doing this. So we can't just stick our head in the sand. Well, no, people are just no. They, there's an enemy that's arrayed against us. Amen. Because that's the only way you can the only way you can put it right now. If listening and talking and seeing and going, whoa, this is just bizarre. Hallelujah. 
And the only way you can do that is because they are. They're being seduced. And thank God that we have the power and the authority over the enemy. Amen? And so we've got to speak truth. We've got to speak the word. And we've got to believe the word. We've got to believe that the word of God works for us. See, if the church would just get so excited about the word of God working for them and excited about the Lord Jesus Christ, people would run and ask the reason of the hope that's within you. Amen? You'd be ready to give an answer to every man that asked that. And we need to ask that. We need to do that. We need to take whole glory to God. God wants to see this thing happen. Amen? Amen. We know that sin's going to run rampant. We know that the love of many is going to wax cold. We know that there's going to be a... But thank God there's the good news of the kingdom. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. The good news of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, if you have your Bibles, go to Romans. Let's shift a little gears here. We're working on it. I guess we're going to rescue you in just a minute here. Hallelujah. But we got to... You got to teach... You guess sometimes you just got to eat your spinach and your green beans, man. You just got to get it. It's like it ain't no fun, but the vegetables will help you. Okay. Amen. But it's time for the church to be in church. We have allowed the enemy, we've allowed the world, we've allowed everybody else who has, think they, think they know what they're doing to push down the power and the presence of the word of God. Amen. You know. Oh, but what? No, no, no. Thank God the word of God is far greater. Far, far greater. And like I said, I love people. I don't judge anyone. I'm going to love people no matter what. I'd love them in their sins. Take care, of them. Take care of things. Glory to God. Amen. And just love them. Help them. Give truth to them. Amen. I mean, and that's where the problem is, is that uh, we don't un- really don't know how to have, not tough love, but we don't know how to have the God kind of love with speaking the truth in love. Which simply says, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to judge you or condemn you. I'm going to be here for you. I'll take care of you. I'm going to do things. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Your life is a mess. And you need Jesus. And you need to stop. Amen. You just need to. Because the Holy Spirit loves you, cares for you. Amen. Hallelujah. No, Lord, I don't want to say that. That's not a good thing. We can go this way. This way. Hey, look over here. Romans chapter 1. Hallelujah. I just... Different, different things going up here. <clears throat> Did I turn that over on the right thing? Hallelujah. I told you to go to Romans chapter 1, correct? Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Yes, I did, right there. I got it highlighted and everything. <clears throat> Got all nervous about that. <laughs> Sorry, we had to interrupt that program. Me and God had to have a little conversation. It's all good. So that's just not fair. Yes, it is. It is fair. Hallelujah. Anyways, Romans chapter 1. Look at verse 21. Hallelujah. <clears throat> For it is the Lord. God is talking to them. And of course, most people, they, they hate Romans. You know, they don't like Romans because Romans basically deals with sin. And this is God's anger at sin. It's frustrated and things. But God said this. He said, yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. And as a result, their minds became dark and confused. Amen. You know, claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious ever living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. The thing about it is, is that when you look at things, he goes on to say, you know, we start to judge or to look at other people. The reason I share this with you is because when we face reality uh, uh, without God and without knowing, the world's doing a good job of being sinners. We as the church need to be doing a good job as being Christians. Amen? God's hand upon us. God's asking us, desiring us. Hallelujah. And uh, if we do this, if we allow God to be God in our lives... Listen, just like, and that's what the world's doing. They're, oh, there's a God, but we don't know what he's all about. We're going to make him up like this. God's going to be like this. He's going to be like this. Amen? Hallelujah. But thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. 
that God in uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 1, he said this. You know, he says, you may think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't write the Bible. I didn't. I didn't. I re- Aren't you glad me and God can talk so we can get it toned down a little bit here? Hallelujah. You may think that you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad. You have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself or you who judge others do the very same things. Now, let me do it all. And we know that God in justice will punish anyone who does such things. And since you judge others for doing these things, why do you think you can avoid God's judgment when you do the same things? Don't you see how wonderfully kind and tolerant and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing? Doesn't this or does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? Amen. Hallelujah. God begins to tell us too that he's going to judge us in that. But you know what? If you judge yourself, you won't be judged. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you obey the truth of the word of God, things begin to change. Here's the thing about it. Why doesn't God just stop? Why, where's God? Why doesn't he just say, okay, it, it, it's, it's enough? Because God's not holding us hostage. He's not. He's not holding us hostage against our will. Isn't it amazing God honors your choice of whether or not you want to be happy? Are y'all okay? Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we, we need to switch, Lord. They're, down, they're drowning. Hallelujah here. See, that's why we couldn't say what we going to say. That's okay, Lord. It's all good. Anyways, but, you know, we are. God, God's not holding us hostage. He's honoring our choices, our, our will. How do we get to it? Glory to God. But we have to guard ourselves against what the enemy's trying to do. Because the enemy's strategy, and this is his strategy, folks. His strategy is to affect us so much in our thinking in our thinking, that we don't think that wrong is wrong. We no longer see what wrong is wrong. Folks, the Bible says we shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And when you know the truth, it brings true freedom in you. It means the freedom that you don't have to succumb to what everybody else is doing. That you don't have to allow the enemy to lie. That you don't have to, or listen to the enemy's lies. You don't have to allow that to affect you. Amen. Thank God that Romans chapter 12 says that by the mercies of God. He said, let's present our bodies, you know, as as a spiritual sacrifice unto God. Present ourselves, which is what God wants us to do. Then he said, don't be conformed to this world. So the whole book of Romans, when you read and you look at it, he gets to chapter 12, of course, chapter 8 and the spirit. But in chapter 12, he says, listen, don't be conformed. But be transformed. And now we've got to get it. See, we've got transformed minds. All right? Now that I've beat you over what you should be doing and all the ugliness of the world, let's talk about us. Let's talk about us. Let's talk about the church. And talk about how we are and the power that we have and what we can do. Amen? And let's contend for this. Let's contend for the faith. Let's know that what's wrong, what's wrong with wrong is it's wrong. What's wrong with right is wrong. Hallelujah. And it brings death. It brings discouragement. It brings all the things. It brings everything, just like the condemnation and guilt when y'all are going, oh man, Pastor, you didn't preach something nice. I don't know why I came today. You came today because God loves you and because God wants to turn your captivity because He wants you to know the truth of the Word of God that's life changing. Life changing. You should know why? This is the thing, this is the reason. Too many of us and too many things that we're just fighting the same battles. There's things that have been bothering battles and battles and battles. You know what? God wants you to win. God wants you to go from glory to glory, from strength to strength, and from faith to faith. Amen? God's desire, God's heart, amen, is he wants you to understand that he's God. And here's the thing. It's not hard. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's not hard. It's easy. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, you know, and my burden is light. So if it ain't light and easy, you're, going to, you're serving the wrong God, doing the wrong thing, living the wrong way. But it's so hard to be a Christian. No, it ain't. 
it's hard to straddle the fence and it's hard to walk on that side and try to be a Christian. It's hard to go be in the world and be a Christian. But it's not hard to be separated. It's not hard to be. It's glorious. It's easy because I've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. Yes, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. I got a whole different set of rules. I got a whole different set of things that God's given unto me. Glory. I can lift up my heads. Hallelujah. For my redemption draws nigh. I got the light and the nature of God. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. But I've got to let that light shine and I've got to let it shine and I can't be ashamed of it. Amen. Yes, we're going to have battles. Yes, we're going to have things that we got to deal with, but we need to be winning. Amen. Because you need to understand, you know, the same power that opened up the Red Sea is the same power that closed that sucker and killed all the Egyptians. That they no longer had any problems with them, okay? So the same power of God that does all these things here is the same power of God that destroys evil, that destroys it, that changes things. And I know we're to endure till the end, the Bible declares, but we're to endure to the end. We're supposed to finish our course with joy. We're supposed to finish with joy. Amen? Hallelujah. We're supposed to take on the devil head on and win every single time. We're to take it head on and win. Hallelujah. Because not only are we supposed to escape what's enslaving us, but glory to God, we're supposed to completely devastate that thing and it is not going to bother us anymore. Amen. And so I don't want you to make peace with the enemy. We're not making peace with the world. We're going to shout. We're going to, we've got to take a stand. For righteousness and truth, we've got to take a stand. For what God, we've got to take a stand for healing. Amen? We see about all that. We just have to for our own self. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? How many you know God didn't call you to cope? He didn't call you to cope with all the problems. Figure it out. How, how, how do I live with this? Amen. <laughs> Lord, you're, you're just giving me so much trouble. God bless you. You know, we look at the Old Testament. Let me share something. You know, this is going to be quite as heavy. But anyways, you know, you look at the Old Testament in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11, after you look at, you know, all the things. But at the end of that chapter, it talks about, he said, I could talk of Barak, I could talk of David, I could talk of Jephthah, I could talk of Samuel, I could talk of all these people. But he made this statement there. He said, all of these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us. So that they would not be reach perfection without us. So God had something better. They didn't get. Because we had the promise of the Holy Spirit to live in us. Amen. And here's the wonderful thing about God. Is God didn't cause us, you know, to have that Holy Spirit on the inside of us and, and, and to see his, his, his glory, his grace. And, and when he's doing, you know, <laughs> hallelujah, you know, that he, he actually said, hey, in the midst of everything you're going through, I'm going to be with you. I'm thoroughly convinced God loves conflict. <laughs> he just loves, he says, hey, we need you to come over here and just face this. God, I, how come my mom was doing has to face something? You know? He said, because I need you. Because I need you. You know? Because here's what. God said, you know, the enemy cannot defeat you. He can only get you to quit. And you quit when you stop using your faith. If I was to say, okay, what are, we, what are you using your faith for right now? What are you believing for? And be like, uh, well, let me think, what do, what do I want? What am I? And, and you're to try to think of things. No, you ought to have an answer immediately. Man, I'm believing. Hallelujah. Here's what I'm saying. I'm believing that strength and wisdom. Yeah. Amen. I'm believing that God orders my steps. Everywhere I go, I'm at the right place at the right time to shine and to give glory to God, to be a, a life-giving source to whatever it needs to be here. Hallelujah. Amen. See, the only way for your faith or real faith to fail is it becomes inactive. We don't ever talk about it anymore because the only thing that can start your faith or ignite your faith or the addiction is your mouth and what you say. James said it like this. 
Show me your works without faith, and I'll show you my works because of faith. Because, see, faith without works is dead. Well, how do you work your faith? Well, first of all, if your faith is not great enough to move your mouth, it ain't going to move your mountain. Anyways. And here's one of the biggest things, too, though. As we talk about it, we've got a responsibility. We do. But if we'll focus on the promises of God, we'll focus on God's delivering power, we'll focus on who God is, then God will order us. And we won't have to worry about thinking, are we doing the right thing? Are we at the right? Because God will lead us and direct us. He'll show us. Amen? How many of you remember Caleb and Joshua? They were part of the, the, you know, the 12 spies. Okay? And they're the only two spies we remember. Why? Because they're the only two ones that had faith. The other ones aren't worth remembering. They're not. But what made Caleb and Joshua totally different is that they kept their eyes on God and said, we're well able. They kept their eyes on the possibility of God. They kept their eyes on the promise. Hallelujah. And they, were, and they had preservation. They were preserved even when Caleb said, okay, we're going in, Joshua. And, and Joshua said, well, Caleb, what do you want? He said, I want that mountain. I wanted that mountain 40 years ago. He said, yeah, but Caleb, they're giants. And I, he said, I wanted that giants 40 years ago, and I want them today. I'm 85 years old. Let me take them. I like it. I like it. You got something to look forward to. Amen. You got to hold it. Hold it. Because like I said, the only way that true faith fails is it becomes inactive. But here's the thing that we've got to grab a hold of ourselves. We've got to take inventory. I don't know about you, but I take inventory all the time in my life about where I'm at, what I'm doing. God, what's going on? What do I need to do here? And if things aren't the way that I think they should be or the way the word of God declares that they should be, then I've got to deal with myself. I've got to deal with two things. My unbelief. And my wrong thinking. Ouch and oh me. That's true. It is. It's like, hey. See, God desires us to have. He wants us to be people of worship. He wants us to do these things here. But you know, there's some things that that Joshua did. That I I said, you know what, Lord? We're we're a type of that. Moses is a type of the old covenant and the old thing. Joshua is a type of the new. He's a type of Jesus. Of what going to. So I need to change my attitude. And you know, our confidence in God and our confidence in ourselves is largely determined on how we perceive ourselves and whatever we're facing, whatever's coming against us, you know? And I don't know about you, but I want to live as the promises of God as a reality in my life. I do not, do not, do not, do not want to stand before Jesus and him say, you know, you could have had this. (laughs) I want to say, nope, I want it. And here's something that we've been talking about. We just had a whole thing about our emotions and everything. And the Lord reminded me. He said, are you receiving your mental stability from me? Or are you governed by thoughts of your past failures or past things that didn't come to pass? And I began to say, you know what? And then he reminded me of Ephesians 4.23. He said, you know what? You need to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You know? You need to be renewed and you need to set aside something. You need to begin to realize, hey, I I need to take hold of this. And he says, you know what? You can't rely on what you've done in the past. It's today that is what needs to be today. Amen? It's today. It's today. Hallelujah. And he says, hey, you can overcome and you're going to overcome the enemy because I overcame the enemy. Amen? And thank God he's given us courage. And I'm going to jump through a whole lot of things here just so we get to it. Amen? But I want to give you these three things. This is, I did this whole thing about what's wrong with wrong and, and share with you what we need to do and why we need to take a stand and why we need to fight the battle. Amen? Why it's so important that we try to you know, endeavor to uh, have this nation still have some kind of sanity so that we can preach the gospel. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, uh, you know, that one of the devil's favorite things to do is he wants to get you into fear and intimidation. He wants to say, well, if you do this, we're going to do this, or you do this. It's like, no, praise God, God's greater. God's greater than all of those things that are going on. You know, hallelujah. And here's something that will help you to finish your course. And don't be beating yourself up. Don't get under condemnation because you didn't do or you haven't done. Start now.
The wonderful thing about God, he's not holding any of your sin. You just say, God, forgive me. Hallelujah for what I haven't done. Lord, help me to step out in what I can do now. And God will forgive you. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He'll forgive you. Hallelujah. He'll wash it all away. And when you come and say, God, I'm so... He said, well, you're sorry for I don't even... You didn't do anything. Why are you being so... You know, why are you so upset about... We, I thought you said you asked me to forgive you. And he put it as far away as the east is from the west. He put it in the sea. It's all gone. It's all gone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here's some principles that Joshua did that caused him to have victory after victory after victory. One of the things was he had this incredible heart of diligence. Hallelujah. And he was committed to do all that God commanded. And the Bible says, he makes this phrase in the King James Version. He says, and he left nothing undone. How many of you know that we've got so many things in our hall closet that it's cluttered? And here's the thing about it. You may not have been obedient in the past. Okay, get forgiveness. Let's be obedient today. But let's leave nothing undone. Let's finish. Let's finish. Let's finish. So number one, let's be diligent to commit to all that God wants us to do. And let's leave nothing undone. That means we need to do the word of God. Amen. Second thing is, hey, let's have a little backbone. Let's get a little bold. How many of you know Joshua had some boldness? He said, let's go. Let's do this. Now, how many you know, he, he took the first city by praising and doing what God says, you know, and praising and worshiping God. Hallelujah. And God wants that boldness. And that means he's going to stretch us. He's going to stretch us in things. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's going to say, hey, I need you to do this. Or, hey, I, and you know what? You're going to see the, the hand of God. You're going to see the blessing of God. You're going to see these things. So let's get some boldness. You know, most of us, we've built our own little pond, and we don't want anything to do it. Yeah, it's all nice and calm and still. It's really cool, and it's great. Listen, yeah, but there's a lot of unpleasant growth right in that pond. There's no outflow. There's no inflow. You're just trying to guard your little pond, you know, hallelujah, and it's not good, you know, amen, you know, and it messes things up. And here's the greatest thing. Here's the greatest thing that Joshua, here's the greatest thing that we have. And this is what I want to end on because I want you to remember this. If you don't remember anything else, you say, oh, Pastor was just a little crazy this morning. Remember this. Remember these three things. Do what God's called you to do. Don't leave anything undone. Have a little boldness in it. Let's believe that God's God. He can do things. And here it is. He had this incredible deep confidence in the faithfulness of God. God's faithful. How many of you know God's not going to leave you? He's not going to. God didn't bring us this far for us to fall. God didn't tell us go halfway across the lake and sink. Amen. And listen, don't ever let your faith be in the past in the sense of the accomplishments of what you've done. Let it, your faith always be in the continual presence of God of what God is doing in your life right now. Hallelujah. God said, when he gives his promise, he also gives us the power to cause it to come to pass. He's faithful. He is faithful. Hallelujah. He is faithful. And God has given you and God has placed within you deposits. And in those deposits, he's looking to receive some things. When, when Paul wrote to the Ephesians, he said this in Ephesians chapter 6. He talked about the armor of God. He gave some things. He gave three things you're all supposed to have. And then he said, there's three things you're all supposed to take up. You know, and if you'll have the three things, and then if you'll take up the three things, you'll always win. You'll always be able to defeat the enemy in the wiles of the enemy. You know, he talked about that up in Ephesians chapter 6, you know, about the wiles of the enemy. He said, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen? You know, it, it, that we can take hold, you know, because, you know, the weapons of our war, you know, you know, and in that sense, he says, we don't fight against flesh and blood. Amen? You know, we don't fight against principalities, fight all that stuff. But he told us to do some things. But he said this. He said, when he got into the armor, he said, you're supposed to have your loins girt about with the truth. It means you're supposed to have the word of God. That's why the word of God is so vitally important. It's so incredible. Because if you have, God gives you one scripture. One scripture can defeat the devil and can keep you saved your whole entire life. Amen. He said, also, you're supposed to have on the breastplate of righteousness. You need to start thinking of yourself in light of the way God thinks of you. 
Amen. Hallelujah. And don't let anybody beat you up, put you down, think, oh, well, you're just, who do you? It's like, uh-uh, I'm a child of God. You have the rest, rest of the rain. And then he also said that you're supposed to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, which means you're ready to give an answer. You're ready to tell somebody about how great God is in your life. You may not know all things, but you know that Jesus loved me and he gave himself for me and I'm born again. I was blind and now I see. I was lost and now I'm found. Amen. Then he tells us we got to take up the shield of faith. See, faith, you can say, well, I believe in God. I have faith. But you still got to take up that shield and quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You got to take that shield. Hallelujah. And you got to quench those things. You got to say, no, no, I'm going to take that glory. Then he tells us we got to take the helmet of salvation. And I think the helmet of salvation is the most vital, most important thing that we have at these end of the age. Why? Because it's guarding your thoughts. It's guarding your brain. And the enemy is bombarding you with all these things here that are going on. Hallelujah. He's trying to do that. He's trying to mess you. But thank God. Thank God we're not going to let that. We're going to keep our salvation. And the last thing he said is take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, so that we can defeat every stronghold. We can defeat every person. We can defeat everything that the enemy is endeavoring to do. So what's wrong with wrong? It's wrong. And when you have the right, which you know what's right, hallelujah, let's take the word of God and let's be bold to let God be God. Amen. Let's be bold in the things of God. Hallelujah. And when people ask you, why do you, well, what makes you think you're so, so smart? What makes you think, how come you're just so strong? How come you've got this? It says, because I've got the word of God. I've got God's word on it because I'm born again. Can I tell you a story about myself? Tell your testimony. Let God be God in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I love you and I praise you and I thank you. Oh, Father, you get me in a lot of trouble, Lord. I love you so much, but I love these folks with all of my heart. They're so precious. Father, the enemy has come in like a flood. And in these last several years, the enemy has bombarded and caused confusion, delusion, deception. And I take authority over that. I do. I really, really do, Father. The truth needs to be known from the Word of God. Father, I do pray. And I pray for the body of Christ that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened, that they may know what is the hope of your calling and what is the riches of your glory and the inheritance of the saints. Father, I pray that they might know the exceeding greatness of your power. Hallelujah. That you've given unto usward. Hallelujah. Who believe in you. Father, I ask, hallelujah, that you strengthen them by your might. Hallelujah. With all strength and all wisdom. Father, I ask that they be rooted and grounded in love so that they can comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height of the love of Christ. Father, I ask that you fill them with the fullness of Christ, that you fill them full, all in all, that, Father, you do exceedingly, abundantly above all that I could even ask or think. Father, the body of Christ needs to rise up because we've got truth. And it's not a force feed. It's not for us to force feed. It's not for us to say, oh, they have to, they're doing. No. Father, we speak the truth in love. We have great compassion. Though the world thinks we're judging them because of our very existence, it brings judgment because, God, you're a God of love, but you're also a God of justice. Lord, my heart's cry is that we stand strong in the things of God. My heart's cry is that we know the truth and the truth sets us free. Father, as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I don't know everybody that's here. And I love everybody, but my heart, as you told me, what's wrong with wrong is that it's wrong and that we have to stand for righteousness and we have to stand for truth. What that simply means is that we have the truth. We have the answer, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. But if there's anybody here that doesn't know Jesus as their personal Savior, and if you're here and it seems like I've 
think like I've been yelling or beating you up. I'm not. I've been talking to the body of Christ, but I'm also talking to you about God loves you. He, God came. We, just like Ephesians says, we were this, but now we're not. Hallelujah. We've been bought with a price. Hallelujah. God in his great mercy was, for by grace are we saved through faith. And it is the gift of God. Hallelujah. Romans also said, if we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, we shall be saved. So if you're here and you don't know Jesus and you want to, raise your hand. I want to pray with you. I love you. You don't have to go through like with all the, you know, uncertainties, with all just thinking, yeah, but I don't know. I've really messed. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus died for all of us while we were all ungodly. Amen. He loves us so much. You know, it's such a wonderful thing. I'm not going to pull. I'm not going to beg. God is too good. Hallelujah. And if you're watching and you see that and you actually got to the end, you made it this far, God bless you. Hallelujah. I love you. Thank you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Would everybody lift up their head and look up here at me? I love you. I love you guys. You know that, right? I feel like I beat the snot out of you today. I didn't mean to, but I do want to share. We've got to understand this, the seriousness of the situations. Thank God for the church. Thank God that we are who we are. Hallelujah. But don't ever back off of your Christianity. Don't ever think you're a second fit. Don't ever think the world is right. It's not right. God's right. Amen. That's what makes, and, and, it, and it should be joyful. Hallelujah. Well, they make sense. No, they don't. They only make sense, hallelujah, if you're not backing it up by the word of God. You know, your mind can be all that kind of stuff. But you say, nope, that's what God says. So we're going to endeavor to let God be God. Let's all stand up. Praise God. We're going to let our prayer team is down. If you need to, if you need to pray, say, hey, come on, I'm going to pray for the pastor. It's all good. I love you all. God bless you. You are dismissed. Be blessed.